points? Well, first of all, does it matter which points are used? And the answer is no. Any two points on the line will suffice. Any two points on the line will work, okay? So why or why not? Well, the reason is any two points you pick are gonna be at the same pitch, which means at the same slant. If I choose these two points, they're both moving along. Your what X and Y are still changing at the same rate. So X and Y change at the same rate for all points on the line. Okay, so let's look at this. I'm gonna pick, just because I want to, I'm gonna pick B and C. Could I have picked A and C? Sure. Could I have picked A and B? Sure. I'm just gonna pick B and C. So remember your slope formula is your change in Y over your change in X. So let's look at my two Y coordinates this time on top. Y, one and negative two. You gotta stay in the same order, so my two x's are two and four. Minus a negative becomes plus a positive, so that's three. Two minus four is negative two, so your slope is negative three over two. Now, if I were to find the slope between this guy and this guy, let's just do it for funsies, because we like doing extra work. Let's do between A and B. Let's do the slope of A and B. I did B, C here. Let's do the slope of A and B. What are my two y's? Seven and one. And what are my two x's? Negative two and two. So seven minus one is six. Negative two minus two is negative four. What does that reduce to? Same thing. Okay, so it works. Number 28, state the relationship between the lines. Well, we're gonna look at the slope. Remember you've got y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and this is your y-intercept. This is slope-intercept form. So the slope of this guy is negative one-third, and the slope of this guy is negative one-third. So what does that mean? Same slope, which means the lines are parallel. Remember, same slope, parallel, opposite reciprocal. Don't say negative reciprocal. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna come get you it's opposite reciprocal slopes, perpendicular, same slope, parallel, different slopes that fall under, that are not opposite reciprocals, and you just have what we call oblique. We don't really use that, just intersecting lines. We call them oblique. Decide line one and line two are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay. Well, first of all, we got to find some slopes. So here's my slope formula for the first one, my handy-dandy slope formula. So let's look at line one. What are my two y's? Negative seven and negative five. What are my two x's? Negative three and negative seven. So plus a positive, so that gives you negative two over plus a positive four, which is negative one half. Let me check my math here because I, I know I'm an awesome, perfect math teacher, but just gotta make sure. So I've got negative two over, And there's a big motorcycle outside the window that needs a muffler, um, if they even do that on those things. I'm totally off topic. ADD, squirrel. Okay, so I've got negative three plus seven, which is four. Okay, so negative one half. So let's check the other guy out. The slope of this guy. My two y's are negative two and negative six. And my two x's are negative five and negative seven. So I got a plus a positive there, so that's a four, plus a positive there, and I have two, which is two over one. Okay, these are what we call perpendicular because they have opposite reciprocal slopes, the upside down T for my classes because you know that I love symbols because I don't have to write perpendicular. I like using this. Because what do I have? I have a negative one over two and a positive two over one. They are opposites and they are reciprocals. What's a reciprocal? It's when you flip. All right, so let's look at 30. State the postulate or theorem that can be used to conclude that triangle OCD, <laughs> they're talking about me. Triangle OCD is congruent to triangle OAB. 
All right. OCD and OAB. Well, remember to prove two triangles congruent, you have five postulates. If you can prove side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or HL, then, it, then you can prove that the rest of the triangle matches up, which is when we get into that CPCTC thing that you can never pronounce or remember. So if I look at these two triangles, OC is congruent to OA, right? CD is congruent to AB. And OD is congruent to OB. And they're all sides, so the answer to this one is side, side, side. By side, 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 I've proven that these two triangles have matching sides, so they're congruent to each other. Okay, all right, so let's move along here. All right, 31. Is QR congruent to SR? If so, why? Okay, what type of triangle is QRS? Okay, let's think about this. What can we tell from the picture? I've got me a right angle, and I've got me a right angle, right? So I know RT is an altitude. Let's use fancy schmancy work. That's an altitude, right? Okay, that's an altitude. I know that because it goes from the vertex to the opposite side at 90. Okay, great. That tells me that those are two right angles because I already had a right angle there. I can also use the reflexive property to establish that RT is congruent to itself, right? But the question is, do I have anything else? Well, in order to prove two triangles congruent, you have to know three sets of pairs, right? I don't have that here. A lot of people would say, oh yeah, QR and SR are the same. How would you know that? How would you know that? You don't know that, okay? The answer is no. There's not enough information. You don't have enough info. I would need to know another piece of the triangle. I've got a side and an angle, but I don't have anything else. I don't have anything that tells me T is a midpoint. So I don't know if QT and TS are the same. If I knew QT and TS, I could say side angle side and then use CPCTC to match these two. There's no angle bisector up here, so I don't know if this angle and this angle are the same. I could have used angle angle side or angle side angle. And I don't know these guys are the same, so I can't use angle angle side. There's nothing I can do. I also can't use HL because I have a leg, but I don't know anything about the hypotenuse. So what tri type of triangle is QRS? It is an acute triangle, and here's why. What do you know about right triangles? Since that angle is 90, in a right triangle, the other two angles are always acute, right? The other two angles are always acute. So you know this one's acute, that one's acute, and you know these two are acute, okay? So the remains, how do I know that this angle itself is acute. Well, what, let's assume that angle is a right angle. Let's assume that angle is a right angle. We'll assume that this one is a right angle. Okay. If that one is a right angle, I still got my acute, I've got my acute, this one's acute, and this one's acute, okay? Well, if that's a right angle right there, then I've got my relationship here. These two angles right here would still both be acute, okay? And 